What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and today I'm back at it again, talking about Warhammer 40k. In today's video, we continue the year and review of 40k in 2020. Now if you're unfamiliar with this five part miniseries, it's basically a look back at all the things Warhammer 40k related that happened in 2020 as we split it up between five categories. The worst thing that came out in 2020, the best thing, the best model sculpt wise, the strongest unit, and our last video will be a surprise. So be sure to hit that notification bell and stay subscribed so you don't miss a thing. And speaking of not missing out, be sure to check out the worst of 2020 which came out two days ago. Now I'll have it link at the end of this video, but also it will all be in a playlist so you guys can check that out. Now with all that out of the way, let's jump right into the best thing that GW did this year. So as we all know, 2020 was one for the history books. It's going to be a huge chapter when kids have to learn about this in American history, or even world history for that matter. But anyway, we're not here to talk about all that, we're here to talk about Warhammer 40k. And in this year, we have to look all the way back to the beginning of the year, where our prayers were finally answered. After years and years of people making a huge commotion when it came to the Sisters of Battle, finally our chants were heard by GW. Give us plastic Sisters of Battle models! Give us plastic sisters! And they finally did near the end of 2019. So basically they put out a wave of new sisters and I want to say like the last weeks of November, but for many people those box sets were sold out almost instantaneously. So for the majority, we saw these new sisters in early January of 2020. So that's why this is more of an honorable mention than the actual best thing that happened in 2020. But still, I do want to talk about it a little bit. The thing that I love about everything sisters related is just how beautiful the sculpts are. I mean, look at this one. It is oh so amazing. The veneration, the religious tones, just the beauty of the Sisters of Battle art is just so amazing. I mean, look at this fan art and this one. Oh, and let's not forget about this one here. So this is an honorable mention, like I said. So let's stop talking about things that happened in the past past and just start talking about things that happened in the past. So let's go on to the real winner of 2020. And that is none other than the Necrons. The Necrons have come out on top this year because they came out in full force. New lore, new models, updated sculpts, multiple starter sets, the Void Dragon arose. And even better than that, the motherfucking Silent King. If you're a fan of Necron, or just a Necron player in general, this is your year. Everything you could ever want came out all at once. This is literally a wet dream come true for Necron fans. Maybe not wet dream, because that's kind of messy. Then you gotta get up and wash your clothes and wash the sheets. So think about it more as a wet dream come true because that's what the fuck it is. It is amazing. It is an FU letter to Space Marines because we literally got a star god who cannot die till at least mid to late game. What can your gods do? Just sit on a throne? Well, our actual Necron Emperor rides his throne into battle and vanquishes his enemies as he laughs with an ensnared star god above him. Isn't that badass? <laughs> Honestly, this is perfect. The hype is real, and it's just so amazing to see a Xenos army 
actually get love like this. We're all so accustomed to seeing space marines get the limelight time and time again, because no matter what, whenever a huge event occurs in the world of 40k, the space marines are tied to it in one way or another. I mean, yeah, that did happen in this case. I mean, we got the Indominus box set. And that box set was really good. So much so that it sold out for multiple reasons. One being the introduction to 9th edition. The rules were in there, and you basically needed to get this box set to play. The next best thing about this box set was that every single model in this box was a brand new sculpt, in a way. Um, like the Necron Warriors, they got a revamped sculpt, so it's kind of new, but we've already seen it, so. And then we got new Primaris Marines, which everybody loves, really great units. And for the Necron side, we got new, I believe they're called Sartek Destroyers in the Sartek Dynasty, and it's a great time to be a Marine player at any time, but Necrons more specifically because near the end of, um, Psychic Awakening, Illuminator Xeros came out, and that was kind of like a preview as to what was to come. And then we started seeing newer Necrons come out, and then 9th edition dropped, and we got a slew of Necrons. And then leaks happened. <laughs> so because of the leaks, we found out that the Silent King was returning, and that the Void Dragon would be coming in too. That's literally the biggest things that the Necrons have all coming out in the same year. It's weird because usually GW doesn't have all their eggs in the same basket, but when it came to the Necrons, they decided, fuck it, let's give it all to them. And I like it because if this is kind of a preview to see how well Xenos do, I think it did phenomenal. We have a buddy who plays Necrons and he was just overloaded with the amount of information coming his way. And it's great to see him be happy, because obviously 2020 is pretty shitty, but the Necrons did it. They overcame the curse of Xenos, and they actually got kind of a Primaris treatment in a way. So, it's going to be amazing if this happens to, say, Gene Sealer Cults, the Tau, the Tyranids. But the one army that definitely needs this Necron treatment is the Eldar. Hands down the Eldar. New Sculpts. We can have the Power Rangers come back. I mean, the Phoenix Lords come back. Maybe have the freaking Reborn God, Inead, make a bigger splash in the world of 40k. Or hell, unleash Isha. That would be amazing. We need to see these types of things more often, GW. Do what you did to the Necrons, but to all the other Xeno races. Now, I'm pretty sure if that does happen, they're going to have to share the limelight with... Primaris Marines, but if it means having a slew of awesome sculpts, awesome rules for another Xenos army, I'm okay with it. This is what made 40k so awesome this year. To see a Xenos army prosper, and prosper it did, because on the tabletop, look at how strong Catan are. They have the same rule that Gaskull does, and if you want to play a Catan, you know that you're going to be playing a Catan. It is not going to get killed, shot off the board, turn one before you even get to use it, because of the rule cap on the wounds. Same thing that Gaskull has, so really, really awesome to see this for Xenos, because I don't think an Imperial Space Marine or Chaos Space Marine has that for that matter. Uh, I kind of wanted to see it on Mortarian, but the rules were leaked and he doesn't have this. So maybe they change it, because it would make sense for Primarchs to have this, because why shouldn't they? But anyway, I'm kind of going off the rails on this one. The best thing that happened in 2020 were, was a win for the Necrons, and kind of a win for Xenos in my mind. Um, a second place would definitely be the Indominus box set because it sold out because so many people wanted it. It was so good, so awesome. And hopefully we see more box sets like this in the future because every single model being a new sculpt is amazing. It doesn't necessarily have to happen for every uh, edition because that's going to be too many editions coming out too quick. And I don't think that's good for the game. 
Uh, if you want to learn more about additions and how they affect Warhammer 40k, check out the video that I did yesterday titled, Are New Additions Bad for 40k? But anyway, I think I'm going too off the rails, too out of topic, so I think it's time to end the video. So in your opinions, what do you guys think was the best thing that happened in 2020? Was it the Indominus box set? Was it a new addition? Was it all these brand spanking new Primaris Marines? Or do you agree that the Necrons won the year? Look back, think about it, and then comment below because I want to know how many people actually loved the new Necron releases, the new Codex, because oh, that's, that's nice too. But yeah. Be sure to stay subscribed, hit that notification bell like I said in the beginning because we've got three more videos in this series coming out and uh, you don't want to miss the best sculpt and the strongest unit and that little surprise video at the end. So as always guys, this has been The Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Peace.